Progress continues on our toaster oven controlled by a PLC because around here there's nothing we like more than the gratuitous application of technology. We're applying this uh, rather expensive PLC to control the temperature of a toaster oven. Now we got that working really well in a past course. We also got it linked up to an HMI, a human machine interface, so we can change set points and change modes and do stuff like that. Then we got it hooked up to a, a US robotics uh, wireless access point, so now we can re, uh, access the tuning and the control of this through a smart device, like a smartphone, or from a computer with a uh, Wi-Fi connection on it. We can log in remotely and actually change that. What we did in this course, the 263 Control Strategies course, is we wanted to add some other supervisory control uh, function to it. So what we did is we made a sequenced set of temperature set points. You'll notice right here the set point uh, slider keeps going up and down all by itself. It's following a very rapid schedule that we put in for testing. This schedule, push that screen, shows initial temperature set point, second set point, third set point, six different set points, and we're calling it preheat, so we could actually put in six different temperatures that we want the oven to step to. Then there's a set of sequences for the time. This is in seconds. So two seconds for the initial time, two seconds for the second time, two seconds for the third time, and so on and so forth. Again, these times are extremely short. We're doing this only for testing purposes. But the idea being when we push the uh, preheat button and we turn it on, it will begin at the initial temperature set point for as long as we tell it to, then step to the next set point for as long as we tell it to, and so on and so forth all the way until it's done. And it will repeat the cycle. So the way we do this in the PLC program is we use a couple of SQO instructions in the Allen Bradley logic. These are the sequencer output. We're using a pair of these. This one right here, excuse me, this sequencer right here goes through the six different steps and what it's doing is calling out of memory these uh, various temperature set points that we put in. So as the position of that sequencer goes one, two, three, four, five, and six, what it does, it picks off those six different set points which have been programmed into memory. And those at, uh, values have been written into memory from the HMI. So if I go over here, for example, and I go to this temperature, I say, okay, well, I want my sixth temperature here to be 450 degrees instead of 500. I can enter that. And what that does is it writes that value into one of the N7 registers in the PLC. And that, that number just gets picked off by the sequencer output when you get to that position. The other sequencer also has six steps, six different positions it can go to. And here we've got a set of N7 registers that will store the time du durations for each one of those steps. So if we go over here to N7, we can see it's actually N7 colon 40. These are the six registers for our different temperatures. And N750 here, these are the six registers for um, the time durations. And those values, again, are written by uh, the entries over here on the HMI. Right now, the program is not running. We're not online. I should say it's running, but we're not online, so we're not seeing these values match what we typed in over there. Uh, this is basically an offline snapshot. But you get the idea. Six different set points, six different uh, time durations. And these two sequencer instructions right here, the one at the top, and the one at the bottom are picking off the different set point and time duration values and stepping along and sending those values to the PID instruction where it becomes the set point for the PID control. And that's going to tell that PID controller to achieve new set points over time according to whatever schedule we give it. So this is called a supervisory control or a sequenced, uh, sometimes referred to as program schedule on set points. This sort of strategy is often used in heat treat furnaces when you need to take the temperature of a metal and raise it and raise it and cool it and cool it according to a certain schedule to anneal the metal or to soften it or to harden it or whatever you want to do with it. Here we're using it on a, an oven to presumably cook food. We could have a warm-up schedule for it. We could have it where you put in a sheet of cookies. It goes through a preheat cycle, then it bakes the cookies, and it goes back to a lower temperature to simply hold them for a longer time, or maybe just turns off after a while. So there's all kinds of possibilities here for what we've done. But it's an illustration of some of the functions you can do using sequencer instructions in the PLC and how they might be applied to a practical application of PID control. Even though, like I said, this is a rather gratuitous application of technology. There are much cheaper ways to do this. The point here is to learn how to do it with real industrial hardware. And that's where you get to have all the fun.